Arthritis in the base of the thumb is pretty common. It's probably because of the motion we have there and the amount of force we put on the thumb when we grip things or squeeze things. It's very common in uh, anybody who uses their hands a lot. It's probably more common in women than men. Uh, the thumb is a, a complicated joint and there's a very small bone here at the base. And this is where the arthritis usually occurs where this bone, the metacarpal, rubs on the trapezium and the cartilage of the soft tissue between the bones rubs away and, and causes a lot of pain. And that pain usually is noted uh, sometimes even at rest, but typically with grip or use, and it's usually felt here in the base of the thumb. The options for arthritis when it occurs in the base of the thumb go from the real simple things, like just avoiding things that are painful or trying anti-inflammatory medication, to more complex things like bracing or even surgery. There are some medications you can rub on the thumb, things that are over the counter like Zostrix or uh, Tiger Balm, uh, Bengay, and if they help, it's certainly worth trying. There's some topical anti-inflammatories or medications that are like a Motrin or an Ibuprofen or a Celebrex, but they're in a topical or a cream form, and those are prescription only, uh, but those can work as well. And then when I, I, there are some patients who benefit from a brace, and there's different sorts of braces that are beneficial. Soft braces can be somewhat comfortable as a support but still allow the thumb to move. Rigid braces really hold the thumb solid and they take away the pain but most people find that they're a little too cumbersome and they don't like to wear them. There's a newer brace that wraps somewhat around the thumb and holds the base in place but it still allows it to move and I found that's pretty helpful and many patients do like it although it's a bit more expensive. And we certainly can show you all those braces in the office and you can pick and choose if you want to try one or not. A brace isn't going to change anything long term, it's not going to make the arthritis go away and it's not going to make uh, the arthritis not progress, but it may make it to the point where it's tolerable and maybe nothing else ever needs to be done. Sometimes we'll inject the thumb too, and an injection with cortisone or catalog or steroids, those are all the same things, and the injection is given into that area where the arthritis is, and by putting a needle right in the area, we can directly put the anti-inflammatory medicine right in there to take away the pain. And the injections do usually work, and they usually work pretty well, they usually work within about a week or so, and they'll last anywhere from about three months on average to up to a year or so I've seen. Um, they don't, again, make the problem go away. They don't make the arthritis go away. It will return, although sometimes they last long enough that a patient's satisfied with that and we don't need to do much else. This is an area of the body I will inject multiple times. Uh, I'd like to wait at least three months between injections, but I will inject more than once, even more than three times if somebody feels they uh, want to proceed with injections. The downside to an injection is it can accelerate the wear of the problem, the wear and tear to the joint, but if someone's going to proceed to surgery or have an injection, it's probably okay to have more injections. One of the things that's worth talking about with arthritis of the thumb is uh, you know, when to proceed with surgery. And all the things I mentioned as far as not doing surgery are very reasonable to do, but sometimes a patient gets to a point where the arthritis is so bad here that their thumb will start to bend backwards and they will start to end up into a collapsed position when their thumb is backwards here and it bends down here and that zigzag deformity is really a problem and if we start to see the zigzag or we start to see the thumb start to bend backwards especially along this joint here then it's probably time to think about surgery. Surgery is also indicated when the other things just don't work anymore and somebody can't live their life the way they want to and then we'll think about reconstructing the surgery. If we decide that surgery is going to be done, the thumb is reconstructed and this joint is rebuilt to take care of the arthritis. And this is one spot in the body where we can remove the arthritis and rebuild the joint without having to put metal or plastic in like a knee or a shoulder or a hip replacement. But it is really a joint replacement. The arthritis is at the base of the thumb here and this bone is removed to remove the arthritis. And some surgeons will just remove that bone and that seems to work okay, but many of us, myself included, are concerned that this bone here can piston up and down if we take this bone out and don't do anything else. There's a lot of different reconstructions to rebuild the thumb joint and they all work pretty well. The one I like to use is where I take a piece of tendon that's attached to this tendon, or attached to the bone here, and use it to rebuild an attachment from this bone to this bone. So we remove the trapezium, I release a part of the tendon from up here in the, in the forearm, and I, and I drill a hole through this bone to this one and tie these two together and use that tendon to create a ligament and that way the bone won't fill the gap from removing the, the trapezium. So a patient who has a surgery like that has a single incision across their hand to remove the trapezium and drill a hole 
and another incision up here, a small nick, to just cut the tenon. When I do the surgery, they're put in a cast afterwards for a few days and then given a removable brace they can take off the shower. But the other, I don't like patients to really move that thumb much for about three weeks. After three weeks, the patient starts to move the thumb and loosen it up and has a removable brace that they can take on and off as they progress and get stronger. What I see is patients do take a little while to recover. It's about a two to four month recovery. Hopefully by two or three months, people are moving their thumb completely the way they want, but it still may be a little weak, especially if they're opening a jar or gripping something. Heavy sport or heavy activity or even opening a real tough jar may be three or four months before someone's recovered at that point. The surgery works real well and should hopefully last a lifetime. I have seen a few people wear them out, but it's usually on the order of 10 years or more. There are potential problems like any surgery. Any surgery can have an infection, which I've never seen from this sort of procedure, but that's a potential problem. Fortunately, extremely rare. There's some small nerves that run across the area where I make the incision, and those can be stretched or even cut, and there can be some numbness from that, and that's quite rare as well. I've personally never seen permanent numbness, but that could happen. But temporary numbness is pretty common. On rare occasion, two, two patients of my own I can remember where their nerves were kind of caught in some scar, and I had to release that to take away some discomfort. Two other patients I took care of in a similar fashion that were treated by another surgeon initially. So there's rare complications, but I think it's a very uh, reasonable procedure as far as risks go, and the outcome is excellent, and uh, the results are usually something people are quite pleased with at about three or four months. It's always a good sign when somebody has a problem, they get it treated, and they come back to have the same thing done on the other side, and that's pretty common with this procedure where I'll see somebody come back for the other side once they're fully recovered.